Hi folks, it's Sonia here with 2x2 Lagoto. Um, coming to you today with some information about fleas and ticks and what you should do with your puppy or your adults and how to prevent fleas and ticks. Um, my thought on this is here we are in the year 2018 and we should prevent fleas and ticks all together. And that way we won't have some of the other troubles that we run into, tick-borne illnesses, um, flea-borne parasites, uh, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. But if we don't ever have fleas and ticks to begin with, we won't have these issues. So my thought on this as I mentioned, is prevention. We'll talk about fleas first. So we've not dealt with fleas in 30 years because of all of the preventatives on the market. There are a numerous flea and tick preventives that you can use. You just have to be knowledgeable about them and find one that is safe and effective for your animal and your area. In certain parts of the country, there are certain medications that just aren't working anymore. Um, one of them is Frontline Plus, not working, I've heard, in parts of Texas or Arizona. Um, so if you live in that neck of the woods, you might want to consider using something else. Frontline Plus is kind of phasing out and going to um, the next... Um, grade, if you will, which is Frontline Gold. That's what we use. That's what we have always used, with the exception of a period of time a few years ago where I was rotating because I thought that was going to reduce my resistance, and some evidence came out that it, it wasn't really going to have that impact, and that I should just use one product until that one didn't work anymore. That product has and is Frontline Plus. We have had some limited experience with NextGuard, and that is going well. We've also had some experience with Sentinel, which is has gone okay. Um, we had some limited experience with Brevecto, but stopped using that when a number of Legoto reportedly began having reactions to it. Frontline Plus, along with all the other topicals, um, is applied once a month. I do it on the first of the month and I have an alarm set on my phone and on my calendar and I've done it for so long, it's just force of habit now. Um, so on the first of the month, I apply this to all of our dogs right between the shoulder blades, about half of the applicator, and about the remaining half of the applicator goes on the um, right above the tail set. And that, um, that prevents fleas and ticks for an entire month. Now, having said that, it prevents fleas and ticks because I've never had fleas in my home and we have a number of things in place to reduce the number of ticks we have. Not every average family has 10 or 15 guinea hens running around their property. We do, and we have chickens. They are all tick eaters. But you also live, generally speaking, the majority of our clients live in fairly um, suburban, urban areas where the flea and and tick population, especially tick population, is not all that great. You're going out to parks, you're going out to the woods to hike, maybe to the lake house for the weekend, then you're probably going to run into some ticks. And you should use something always that prevents ticks. Um, having said that, I, I haven't seen ticks on our crew for years I haven't uh, bless God um, so but the frontline gold is doing its job too 
I mentioned prevention. If you put flea medicine on your dog, but you have a flea infestation in your house or your yard, you're kind of spitting in the wind. Um, it's, it's going to be very hard, if not uh, impossible, to reduce that flea um, infestation. And that's the other thing I want to talk to you about. If your yard, because you've had a dog years ago and haven't in a while, or you have a neighbor's dog close by, or any number of things um, can carry fleas into your yard, you need to make sure that your pest control or your yard control guy is treating your yard for fleas. And if they're doing that, make sure they're doing it with something that's not toxic to pets or humans. The other thing is, if you have had a flea infestation before, or you find yourself suddenly having a flea infestation, I want to speak very frankly about this. Having dealt with this as a vet tech and a practice manager at a vet clinic for a decade, you are not going to be able to slap a flea collar on, or give your dog a flea bath, or treat your dog with topical or oral, oral flea medication and expect all those fleas to go away. It's not going to happen. You are going to have to aggressively, and when I say aggressively, I mean declare war on the fleas. That is going to require flea bombing. Either you do it yourself or you have someone come in and do it. It's expensive if you have someone come in and do it. And to be really honest, they're going to use the same cotton picking thing that you can find at your vet or at the pet store or at Home Depot. You walk in and if it says you need one canister for 1,500 square feet, get three canisters. I'm talking that kind of declare war. It is the only way that you can get ahead of and return to a prevention state with fleas. Otherwise, you are spitting in the wind and wasting your money. And meanwhile, your dog is miserable because it's getting eaten alive by fleas. The flea cycle lasts 18 to 21 days. So when you see one flea, there's probably a thousand. And I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not trying to over exaggerate. I'm declaring war on fleas on your behalf. So when you see one flea, there's probably a thousand. They hide in cool, damp, dark places. Doesn't always have to be all three of those things. It can be cool, it can be dark, and it can be damp. If it is dry, arid, and sunny, it is very difficult for a flea egg to live. You may see some fleas, but a flea egg cannot live. It'll dehydrate and there'll be no flea. So a lot of these chemicals are aimed at destroying the flea egg and they're neurotoxic to the flea itself. So if you're applying the topical and you have no fleas, if one or two fleas jumps on your pet while you're out at the park, you're not going to have a problem because it's a neurotoxic, the flea jumps on there and it dies, or the flea jumps on and bites your dog and it dies, it's dead. But that flea can remain on your animal's body as a dead flea, and guess what? Dead fleas, I don't know how they do this, can lay an egg. So. That's why if you're doing this treatment thing, you have to vacuum underneath your bed, underneath your couches and chairs, any place where there's shadows, dark, damp, cool, underneath your cushions, underneath your rugs. Um, and then, here's the critical thing, you have to dispose of that vacuum canister full of what you have just vacuumed up. And when I say dispose of, I mean take it out of the canister, wash the canister, spray the canister with some kind of citronella oil, essential oil that will kill and deter fleas. And then you'll take that bag or the contents of that, 
canister, you'll put it in a garbage sack, you'll double bag it, and you will take it out to the trash can outside of your house. Got it? You will have to do that for two days, one day apart. So you flea bomb your house and your yard and do all this routine with vacuuming and cleaning and washing your sheets. Don't forget to wash your sheets. And then you'll wait a day and then the day after that you're going to do the whole routine all over again. And that, my friends, is how you declare war on fleas. And if you ask me how I know, I can tell you that it was because my mother had a corgi that she just didn't think that it applied to her because she had an indoor dog that she should use flea medication on her indoor dog. And I said, Mom, the dog goes outside to go to the bathroom. So yes, it's an indoor dog, but you're bringing in the fleas from outdoor animals, squirrels. They carry fleas. Rabbits, they carry fleas. So those animals will hop through your little yard and deposit flea eggs underneath your nice shady tree in your nice mulch and then your dog goes outside and gets one flea on its body, carries that flea inside or you get it on your pant leg or in your sock, in between your sock and your tennis shoe. So you carry that inside and bammo, the next thing you know, you've got a flea infestation. So not trying to scare y'all, the sky's not falling, but I helped my mother deal with this flea infestation and we went napalm crazy on it and then you have to treat the dog every month thereafter. Um, we say that if you live south of the Mason-Dixon line, you should be using a flea and tick prevention year round. Um, that you can get away with a March or April to October time frame on using flea and tick prevention in the south, or excuse me, in the north. But I say it's not worth it, especially if you're going to the vet, going to the pet store, going to dog training facility, going to doggy daycare, going to the groomer, because guess what? It's not 32 degrees in the groomer you don't keep your house at below freezing to kill these that may just have lived through the winter because they're nuke proof so we just say it's easier to just keep them on it year round and it's inexpensive enough that treating for fleas um, is it's more expensive than preventing fleas. So flea-borne illnesses, um, there's a couple that I rarely ever see happen, but um, the one that I do see happen with fleas biting animals, it will transmit um, tapeworm. That is the only way, well, it's not the only way, your dog could eat a squirrel that had tapeworms. Your dog could eat a mouse that had tapeworms. Um, but generally speaking, the only way a pet can get tapeworms is if there's a flea infestation. So if you find fleas, you're going to have to treat for tapeworms. You, you don't even wait to see them because that's just gross. And you're going to have to treat twice because of the life cycle of the tapeworm. So fleas, that's our talk on fleas. Ticks, this is our talk on ticks. Oh tick-borne illnesses. Um, there are a couple um, that are scary, so I won't talk about those. Just know that you don't want to have ticks on your pet. The big one, obviously, is Lyme disease. And there's a vaccine, um, and then obviously there's prevention. Just keeping the ticks off of your pets. That's the, that's the big takeaway that I want everyone to have today prevent if we're preventing we will not have to treat and it, like I said if you see a couple of fleas 
there's probably several thousand and at that point you're going to have to treat your yard and your house because you, you, you just don't want to mess with it. Um, I talked about those products that prevent and what we use if you have access to things like Activil or Biospot those are also effective. Um, I, I don't really have experience with a whole lot else but if you want to ask me about something your vet has recommended I am more than happy to investigate that. I hope this video has been helpful and if you have any questions you can reach out to me through email at 2 by 2 logoto at comcast.net. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.